and they were slaves to the Egyptians. And of course, Moses didn't feel comfortable doing it first, so uh, God said, well, I'll help you with your brother Aaron, and then the two of you can you know, do this. And so, and then Moses, how many years did he walk in the wilderness? 40 years, right, with these people. They took risks every single day, struggling to go to the promised land. And what do we know about Noah? He built an ark. I mean, really? Why would you build an ark to house all these animals and, and his family? I mean, does that really make sense? But yet, Noah listened to God. So he took a risk. Regardless of what everybody else was saying, he took that risk and he built the ark. And we had the animals go on two by two, etc. All right, so then we have some other stories here too. We have a story about Ruth. Ruth is a, a, a one of my favorite stories from the Old Testament too. And Ruth is a Moabite. Now Moab is the country of Moab that um, is like southeast borders part of what is the Great Salt Sea, what we would call like the Dead Sea. And um, she winds up marrying me to a family. Uh, Naomi is her mother-in-law. Elimelech is the husband of Naomi. But they were, Elimelech and Naomi are originally from Bethlehem of Judah. But there's a drought there, so they go over to Moab with their two sons. Well, the husband dies, Elimelech dies, so Naomi's left there with her two sons. Those two sons decide to marry Moab women, and one of them is Ruth. The other one is Orpah, not Oprah, but Orpah, okay? And those two sons, after a few years, they also die. So now, Naomi tries to send the two daughters-in-laws, go back to your own families, because I have nothing for you. There's nothing here. I have no other sons for you to marry or anything else. And Orpah eventually leaves. But Ruth says, no, I'm going to go with you back to your country, back to Bethlehem. And your God will be my God. And Ruth, who is a Moabite, who is considered an enemy of the Israelites, she is willing to go with Naomi. And these two women travel all the way back over to Bethlehem and meet cousin Boaz. And, and so there's a lot of risks that take place. But Ruth embraces God, okay? And I bet you didn't know who uh, Ruth's great-grandson was. King David. Okay, so even this Moabite, who was originally considered an enemy of the Israelites, because she is embracing God, God accepts her and welcomes her into the family, so to speak. And lo and behold, after she remarries and gives birth to children, one of those, the great-grandson, is David, King David. So here's just a few risks. There are so many stories that I could tell you throughout the Bible. David, David fought Goliath, right? David, a little, you know, still young, fights this big, huge giant, right? In the Valley of Elah. And then Samuel, who is the prophet, the judge at the time, once David gets even older, he risks his life because this person by the name of Saul was king. And God wasn't very happy with Saul. Saul kind of messed things up and wasn't listening to Samuel anymore, wasn't listening to God. So God sent Samuel to go anoint a new king. And of course Samuel's kind of freaking out. He does it, but he's freaking out because he said, if Saul finds out, he'll kill me. But God tells Samuel what to do, so Samuel travels and goes to the family of Jesse, okay, and goes through all the different sons. And then it's the youngest son, David, who... Samuel anoints and becomes king. So we have a lot of different stories. These are just a few of the stories in the Old Testament. There's a whole bunch more that where we see people taking risks. We see where they trusted what God was leading them, what God was calling them to do, and they took a risk. And lives were changed. And then we get to the New Testament, something that we may be more familiar with. And we get to Jesus. And what does Jesus do? He, he hangs out with some fishermen, right? And he says, hey, come follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Make, make you fishers of men, fish for people. 
And what do these fishermen do? They follow. They leave their nets behind, right? They leave those nets behind and they go and they follow. Aren't they taking a risk leaving their families behind, leaving their nets behind? And they're going to go follow this man, Jesus? Jesus hadn't done all of the miracles and healings yet. And yet, here are these people who are leaving, tax collectors who are leaving their life, and they're following Jesus, and they're willing to travel with him for three years. So they're doing all these amazing things, and each and every day, they're taking risks. And Peter, wonderful Peter, Peter, he, he, he's a go-getter. He kind of stumbles at times. But Peter, you know, the time when they see Jesus walking on the water, and Peter says to Jesus, if you command me, you know, let me come to you. And Jesus says, come on out. So what does Peter do? Peter's the only one who steps out of the boat, right? He steps out of the boat. And at first he's doing okay, because he's got his eyes on Jesus. But then the wind picks up, right? And he senses everything around him, and the waves and everything else. He freaks out, and he loses sight of Jesus. And what happens? He starts to sink, and he says, Lord, help me. And Jesus does. Jesus helps him. Jesus saves him. The Lord is with us even through our most difficult times. And, you know, Peter does other things, too. And, and the disciples, you know, there's this time in both Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke where these fishermen have been fishing all night long. They catch nothing. And Jesus gets in the boat, and he says, come on, let's go out. He said, throw your nets on the other side. And they're like, we've been fishing all night. We've got nothing. But they listen to him. They go, they throw the nets on the other side, out in the water. The nets are overflowing, and they start to tear because there's so many fish. So many ways that people take risks. And risk is something where we step into the unknown a lot of times. We don't always know what's going to happen. We don't always know how God is going to use us or what God is going to ask of us. And the question is, are we willing to take that risk? Are we willing to take a leap of faith? Are we willing to step out in our faith? So a couple of my questions are, what have you done? What are you willing to do? do to risk for your faith? What are you willing to risk to answer God's call? Are you willing some easy things? Are you willing to go out and talk to a friend and share with them, share with them your story, your witness? What about inviting them to an opportunity here in the church? Whether it's the worship service, whether it's our Bible studies, whether it's helping out with our community dinners or our Brooks Barbecue, or some other ministry opportunity. Helping out serving at the rescue mission. What are you willing to say yes? It involves risk. It may involve the unknown. Are we so afraid that we're going to be rejected or that we're going to get into something that we can't handle, that we're not willing to trust what God is asking of us. We take risks every day, and some risks are greater than others, but God is saying, come, follow me, and I will help you fish for people. I will help you make disciples of Jesus Christ so that we can transform this world, so that we can bring God's love and God's grace freely and openly to others. When I was at a seminar a few years ago in Ohio, at the very end of this worship service, it was an incredible worship service, we were able to be anointed. They had anointing stations all over the place because there's thousands of people there. And when I went up to be anointed, the person, as they were going to be said, with God's grace, you are enough. You are enough. And that helped me so much, because sometimes we do feel overwhelmed. 
Sometimes we feel that we just can't do what God is calling us to do. Or there's so many other things in our lives that we just, it's just too much. But God says you are enough because my grace is sufficient for you. And I am there and I will be there with you all the days of your lives. You are enough. Thanks be to God.